Number 44. Calculate the equilibrium constant at the temperature given. Okay, so we have H2 gas plus I2 solid yields 2 HI gas at a specific temperature, 0 degrees Celsius. So from that information, we want to find out the equilibrium constant, which is capital K. Now there's so many different K values, right? There's Ka, there's Kb, there's Kc. In this case, I could probably guesstimate that we're solving for a Kp because I do see that we have gases and gases have pressures, uh, you know, associated with them. Does it really matter what K we're, we're solving for? No, because there's basically only one formula that links an equilibrium constant with the temperature value. And that's the formula down below here. So I'm just going to pull this up. So the equilibrium constant, capital K, equals E, which is the E button on the calculator. And that button is all raised to the negative delta G divided by R times T. So let's see what we can plug in at the moment. Let's start with R. Now they didn't give me an R value, but that's okay because R is a constant number. If we're using energy values, which we are, delta G is a Gibbs free energy, the R value is 8.314. Now the units are joules per mole times Kelvin. So these units will dictate what's allowed in this formula. So for example, the temperature value the R value says it has to be in Kelvin. Whoop, what happened there? Can this little blue get, oh, I guess that's staying. Doesn't really matter. But anyway, so temperature has got to be in Kelvin, but ugh, they gave it to us in Celsius, right? They gave us 0.0, .0 degrees Celsius, but that's okay. Because we can convert Celsius into Kelvin, right? Celsius to Kelvin, you just plus 273. More specifically is 273.15, which is what I'll use just to get a more exact answer. But this would be the same number, 273.15. Okay. The only thing that's left is that delta G value. But they didn't give me a delta G. So there's either two ways of going about it. Now, some of you might say, well, wait a minute. It's a delta G notch, right? Which means standard. So I can go in the back of the textbook get the appendix values for the delta Gs, products minus reactants, and plug it in. That would be awesome if the temperature was at the temperature of those appendix values. The temperature of the appendix values are 25 degrees Celsius for delta G. Unfortunately, we are not at that temperature. So that was a really good guess, but eh, it's not going to work. So we need a different route. What's another formula that relates delta G with the temperature? Ah, yeah, it's the one written down here. Delta G equals your enthalpy for the reaction minus your temperature times the entropy of the reaction. So if I'm solving for delta G and I have the temperature, well, now I have to find delta H and delta S. Oh, boy. That's why I went in the back of the textbook to get those delta H values and the S values, because those we can find out standard and then use the temperature difference to find the different delta G. Okay, isn't this fun? I know, but let's keep going. So let's work with delta H first, right? Delta H, we have to find out the whole delta H for the entire reaction. And if we grab the delta H values for each component from the back of the book, we could just use this formula right here. Delta H for the whole entire reaction, Rxn as reaction, is equal to the sum, that's this, right? The sum, add up, right? The addition of all the delta H's of the products minus the sum of all of the delta H's for the reactants. Maybe I'll just pull this a little bit down. There we go. Okay. So are these numbers going to stay the same or are they going to be different? Well, it all goes by the coefficients. You had one H2, you had one I2, and you have two HIs. Take the values that you found at the back of the textbook and multiply them by your coefficients. Just good practice. So just to show you that you would times one by zero, one by zero, but then this one has to be times by two. Now you're going to sum up the sides, right? Sum up the blue sides, that's the reactants. It's H2 plus I2. I'm going to add those up. This, we don't really have to add anything because there's only one substance. So zero plus zero is zero. And now let's find out what this is. 
26.48 times 2, I get 52.96. Now I have those sums. Let's plug them in into the formula. So delta H for the whole entire reaction equals the sum of the products. So 52.96 minus the sum of the reactants, which is zero. So this one's pretty easy, right? Delta H for the whole reaction is just going to be 52. 0.96 units. Well, the, the back of the textbook is kilojoules per mole, but since you times each one of them by the moles that you had, those were the coefficient values, the moles go bye-bye. So in this case, it's just kilojoules. Now we have to do the same for the delta S's. And it's great because we could use the same formula, which was this one, right? But now, instead, I could say, well, wait a minute, I could do the same thing for the S's. So bye-bye H's, hello S's. So delta S for the whole entire reaction would be the sum of the S products minus summing up all the S reactants. Do the same exact thing. Take the values that you found in the back of the textbook and times it by the coefficients. So it'd be 1, 1, and 2. Add up the sides. So we have 130.7 plus 116.14. I don't have to add anything up here because there's only one substance. So let's see, 130.7 plus 116.14. That looks good to me. Numbers look good. 246.84. And now 2 times 206.59. Okay, everything's looking good. 413.18. Now let's do the, the problem. Delta S for the whole entire reaction equals 413. 413.18 minus uh, 246.84. Okay, delta S for the whole entire reaction equals this value. So I'm just going to pull it. That's why I love the TI-84. I could just grab my numbers that I want that I already calculated. Leaves no room for error, just as long as I put them into the calculator right. <laughs> but anyway, press enter. OK, so we have 166.34. Units, back of the textbook is joules per mole times Kelvin. You multiplied by all those moles, so now it's just joule per Kelvin. All right. We finally found the delta H. We finally found the delta S. We have the temperature. That was the 273.15, and we can solve for delta G. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this. That's the next formula. Get rid of this, and let's go for it. So Gibbs free energy, delta G equals, well, wait a minute. My delta H is in kilojoules, and my delta S is in joules. They have to be the same unit. Now, which way are we going to convert? Are we going to convert to joules, or are we going to convert to kilojoules? Well, ultimately, look back at your formula that you have to use. That gives free energy, according to the R value, it's got to be in joules. So the easiest thing is to take the kilojoule value and turn it into joules because then I can find my delta G in joules, and then I plug it in. Kilojoules to joules, you times by 1,000. Similarly, you could take the decimal, move it over three times to the right. So in this case, it would be 52960, 52,960 joules. And that's the number that's going for the delta H, 52,960 minus my temperature in Kelvin, 273.15, and then times by the S value, which was 166.34. All right, I could plug this all into the calculator at once. The calculator will understand what functions to do first, and then we're good to go. 52960 minus 273. 0.15 times, I'm going to take that number that I just found, and I'm just making sure that my numbers match. 
We're good to go. Press enter. So seems like this is non-spontaneous. It's a positive delta G. 7,524.229. And that's joules. Whoop. Okay. So I didn't round because that's not the answer. Right, I still want to find that equilibrium constant. I feel like I'm doing a marathon here. Oh, my goodness. 7,524 and 229. So we got all the variables now. Let's plug it in. K equals E raised to the, maybe I'll bring this down a little bit, negative fraction. The delta G value is going up on top. 7,524.229 divided by those two values on the bottom. So we have the 8.314, that's the R value. And then we have the temperature value 273.15. What I would do is I would just simplify what's going on here, right? Get this to be one number, and then I can take the E value and raise it to that value. So in the calculator, I'm just gonna say negative, pull that delta G because the negative is in the formula. So I have to put it there divided by 8.314. Now, since I'm not using parentheses and I still want to tell the calculator that this has to be in the denominator, I'm going to press divide. If I did say multiply, it's going to literally times it. It's going to pretend that it's in the numerator and everything looks good to me. Let's press enter. Still, it's not the answer, so don't round. So 3.3, negative 3.3132, yada, yada, yada. Where did yada, yada, yada come from? What, um, it probably didn't come from there, but it's a very famous uh, TV episode. Great show. Let me know. Anyway, let's take the E value, right? So K equals, drum roll please, second LN. That's where you'll find the E button. And it's already raised for you, so all I gotta do is just grab that whole number and press enter. And seems like, I guess, four sig figs. At the end of the day, the R value had the four sig figs. So maybe we'll say 3.6, 3, 3 oh boy. Well, the eight rounds the nine up to a 10, so that's four zero. So 3.640 times 10 to the negative second. If you wanted to put it into scientific notation, if you didn't, that's the, the answer on the you know screen. One, two, yep, we're all good there. And that's it, okay, what'd you think? Thank you so much for viewing the video, subscribe to the channel, and for all of you that have subscribed and who haven't, right, who've watched the video, who's, who's learned from this channel. Thank you so much for coming here. I really do appreciate it. And I'm so glad that you guys are learning the material in your classes. I think that, you know, online learning is really tough, or even if you're in class, you know, learning is tough. So my brother and I, we are here to help. and We love to help. So thank you for giving us the opportunity to teach you through a video, which is kind of crazy, but I'm so glad that you guys are learning. Hope you have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.